Hello my fellow artisans and welcome back to the Artisan Electrics channel. Thanks for watching and if you haven't done so already hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell because I know that many of you are watching my videos regularly but you haven't subscribed yet and that just makes no sense. So I post videos here every week and if you subscribe then you'll get a much better user experience. So today's video is all about moving a consumer unit from underground in a basement to up above in the living room and all the procedure that was involved because we had to remove the service head, we had to get the distribution network operator in to relocate the service head, the meter, they had to extend the supply cable underground. So there's quite a lot involved and I think you'll find today's job interesting. If you haven't done so already, head over to Instagram and follow me on there because I post there pretty much daily and also on Twitter there's a great community on Twitter of electricians who are always discussing interesting things and you can learn a lot from there so if you head over to Twitter and follow me there as well then you'll get some great contact going on and if you check out the link in the description for my Patreon page you can see a load of extra perks that you can get if you really like the channel there's some extra benefits that you can get by subscribing and helping the channel as a Patreon. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So let me show you what we're doing down here. So we have, at the moment, we're in, in this cellar. We've got the old consumer units. Uh, these are Wilex ones here, old lead sheathed uh, supply cable and basically what's going to happen is this cellar is going to be tanked so we need to remove all of the electrics from here from this wall, get it off, get it out of the way so that the cellar can be tanked. And so in order to do this the customers asked UK Power Networks to come out, remove this supply and meter from here and put it outside in a outside weatherproof uh, box. So what we've got to do is basically move all the consumer side of things up to a room above. We've got this armoured cable here, which is a 25 mil three core armoured going outside, and then it goes like three, four meters underground to the new box that they have supplied. So we're going to put a new switch fuse in there. UK Power Networks are coming today to install, like to extend the, this cable, cut it underground, extend it to the new outside meter box. Then at lunchtime, Eon are coming and they're going to put a new meter in outside in the meter box there. We're going to put the switch fuse in, connect the tails, connect the armoured, the 25 mil armoured in, run this up pop up here and there's a room above and we're going to mount the new consumer unit on the wall there and um, there's these radiator pipes here so we're just going to go to the left of the radiator with a little bit of space um, and then all these cables the final circuits which you can see running here um, all of these need to be extended up to the new consumer unit location. So we're gonna use the Wargo box XL, probably put a few of them along here on the joist and then extend everything up. Gas is already bonded just after it comes into the property. So that's good, we can just reuse uh, that existing bonding clamp and extend or replace the cable going up to there. Water is here, so that's really handy as well. It's a plastic incoming water main but there is copper coming out and there doesn't seem to be any plastic joints. Oh wait, actually there is there's a plastic joint here. So there's only, yeah, that's plastic and that is copper. So there's about two meters of copper there. So it probably doesn't need bonding, but we might just run a cable to it anyway and, and bond it. So that's done. This is a bit tricky because this is the burglar alarm box and that's going to go mad when we turn the power off. And we're probably going to have to take this off the wall and just screw it up here temporarily and then run a power supply to it so that this can be kept going but it's not on the wall and then they can tank the cellar and then 
relo relocate it or they'll have to get a burglar alarm company in to extend these cables and, and redo that later on. So it's gonna be a pretty epic day of work. I'll show you upstairs now. So now here upstairs, this is where the new consumer unit's gonna go. You can see that radiator pipe that I talked about. So we're gonna just pop up with the armor just here. Got this Hager 12-way uh, SPD consumer unit going in with a load of RCBOs. And these are the Havago box cells that I was talking about. So we're gonna put some of those in downstairs. It just means that we can fit several circuits in one Wago box. It saves us putting like 12 normal Wago boxes in. We'll just put three of these and they'll do the trick. Um, the Luden uh, isolator that's going outside, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, a couple of cleats to cleat everything on. I think what we'll do is cut a slot in the board here, run all the cables over. Uh, just clip them on top of the skirting and then the customer will install some kind of boxing around the consumer unit so that it's all neat and tidy afterwards. So this is the outside meter box that we're installing. That's the cable for the DNO. Flimsy little thing, isn't it? Uh, ridiculous how they can put in these flimsy little cables and we have to put in these chunky great things. But I'm guessing that it's like very um, high capacity copper in these cables. Let me know in the comments if you know anything about that. This is 25mm 3 core armoured going out of the box and we're going to just put a switch fuse in here somewhere and just hope that we can persuade UK power networks to give us enough space in here to be able to do that. In fact, if we just fit, if we just fit the thing first and they don't really have a choice, that's probably the best way to do it. Um, yeah, cable goes in under here with this nice electrical warning tape across and into the property there. Pops in under floorboards and then our consumer unit is just on the other side. And down here is where they're going to be doing the joint. So you can see the old uh, lead sheath supply cable there. And then that is the new cable that they're going to be connecting. So I guess that they'll just um, cut that, do some kind of underground joint, and then um, liven everything up for us. They'll probably only be here now, knowing them. And they're probably charging about three and a half grand for it or something. So anyway, that's the job. So this is one of those really old ones. I thought it was with the asbestos fuse carriers, but it doesn't seem to be. They're just these um, ceramic fuse carriers. So pretty vintage though still, with a little fuse wire there that wraps around uh, the top. Goes through the middle there. So um, that's that one. It's weird though, because they're on 15 hour circuit uh, fuses, but those are like 1.5 mil cables. So I'm not quite sure what they're doing. And then here we've got the um, main board. So, still no lighting circuit. So I'm reckoning that's probably the lighting board actually. This is like an old cooker board or something. Um, 
It's a very old twin and earth cable, six mil, it looks like. See that leakage of that, all that oil around that cable? That's quite dodgy. Glad they're replacing all that. Um, yeah, so nothing's labelled up, of course. So we actually have no idea. Um, oh, wait, yes, it is. Immersion heater, boiler, 13 amp sockets, ground floor and first floor sitting, 13 amp sockets, second floor landing bedrooms, hall 13 amp, cellar 13 amp. Okay, so that helps. And uh, this one, let's see if that's labelled at all. No, of course not. So we don't know what half of these circuits are, but um, if the old MEM board's got anything on it. No, nothing as well. So it's all a bit vague, but I'm um, just going to rip this all out, label each circuit up with numbering and ampage at least, so we kind of know what's what, and then we're going to just extend everything across and then do all the testing um, once it's all extended across. Probably should have done the ICR first, that would have been better, but we didn't have time in this case, so just got to do it this way. So I'm going to pull the main fuse and see if the UK power network is quite good, isn't it? So i just uh, spoken to UK Power Networks guys and they actually asked me to pull the main fuse. They're like, oh, can you pull the main fuse, mate, while you're down there? So I'm just going to do that now. Cut this seal. They're hard to cut these things. It's pretty loose anyway, to be honest. So, safe isolation procedure. I've got my GS38 test lead here with my proving unit. And I'm just going to test to make sure that works correctly. Okay. Now, main fuse is disconnected. But what I need to check is that these terminals are actually not live, just in case for some reason the supplier's head is shorting across. And okay, we've got no power there. So what we do is we go on the least dangerous terminal first. So in this case, it should be neutral first, then live, nothing there. Then we go earth first. And then live, nothing there. And then earth and neutral, nothing there. So all good. And then we've got to check our tester to make sure that in the process of testing, we didn't actually kill the tester. So we test the tester as well using the proving unit just to make sure that the test is still working. And it is, so all good. So KT, uh, Q Tech, uh, Q Proof unit, and QTEC KT1780. Good little bits of kit there. I'm also going to just check these ones and these ones just to make sure that they're all dead as well. And then I'm just going to start ripping everything out. So that in there? Yeah, it's one of those bullet joints type Yeah. Do you have to isolate it on the street or do you just do, no, it? do it live? You do it live, no, yeah. I'm just trying to yeah. 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 Um, I'll pull that main switch for you, I'll leave it here for you, just so you know that nobody's sticking it back in. What's, uh, what's the situation these days of pulling main switches for electricians? So, so everyone seems don't to have worry, a different don't idea. Don't worry about it. That's what I thought, you know, because if there's no isolator, then what can you do? Don't you know? worry about it. Last they, won't do it. they won't say anything to anybody there, do they, Harry? No, exactly. Just, what is it? You're isolating something. Yeah, the thing exactly. is, when you think it back up, who's taking responsibility to connect it? You are. Yeah. There you go, so you've heard it from the horses' mouths. The guys who work on the ground at UK Power Networks, they said, don't worry about it, nobody's gonna do anything. It's safe isolation at the end of the day. You can't be working on live stuff, 
there's no way UK power networks are going to come out and isolate it for you. So what you've got to do, pull the main fuse and then, um, you know, reseal it afterwards if you can. So interesting to see, you know, just to speak to the guys who are doing it day in, day out and see what they say about it, because you hear so many different rumours and, and opinions from different electricians. But to speak to the UK power networks guys is quite handy, really, just to see what they um, say about it and, you know, with the real guys who are on the ground. Um, anyway, I'm leaving this job now. I've got to go over and do another job just around the corner at a hotel. I'm installing a replacement speed controller for a big industrial kitchen fan. Um, it's a three-phase speed controller, ABB, and I've got a new PCB to put in there as well because the old one basically just burnt out. So I'm gonna go over there now and do that. Hopefully it's not gonna take too long. I'll see if I can get some footage of doing that as well, if I can. And then I'm gonna pop back and probably help Andrew to carry on with this job. So quick update, um, all the consumer units all been ripped out now. The DNO have just left the old service head in place even though they've cut off the the um, cable and everything. So I'm guessing we'll just be able to take that off the wall and cut the old cable. Um, so what we're doing now, the armoured here is in, that goes up to the new consumer unit, that's all terminated. Then these cables are all coming down, um, going into these Vargo Box Excel to extend the circuits across. There's one there. Um, some of the cables came from this side, so we could actually run them in from the left, which is quite nice. Um, that socket and the other burger alarm actually are not going to be able to stay on that wall because they're, the whole thing's being tanked, so we've got to remove everything from the wall. So we're going to have to unscrew that and just screw it onto a joist or something for the moment. Um, yeah, I'll show you upstairs and the switch fuse. So here is the consumer unit. Uh, so you've got the armoured cable coming up from the from the floor there up into this consumer unit. It was just long enough, so that's good. And some of the cables are old that we've been able to reuse the full length. Most of them are going to have to be extended across. Managed to get some circuits livened up now. So they will have power overnight, which is good. Um, so yeah, it's going okay so far. And outside, so you can see this is where the cable comes out from the cellar, runs under the ground here. That's the joint that the DNO have done for the main service cable. So the old lead sheath cable has just been cut off just there, you can see and then they've run the new cable in along with our cable up to the, the board here. Uh, Eon have been in and put the meter in. New 100 amp service fitted by UK Power Networks. And then that's our 25 mil three core armored coming up with the tails out. And we've just got an 80 amp fuse in there so that you've got a bit of discrimination. Um, 80 amp fuse for the main uh, switch fuse there. So yeah, so far so good. guys let me know in the comments what you thought about that job did you like it would you have done it differently all your constructive criticism is always welcome I know that people love giving their two pence worth and I'm all up for that so thanks for watching and as I said before if you haven't done so already subscribe to the channel it will really help my channel to grow and you'll get regular video updates from me if you tap the notification bell also if you enjoyed this video and you found it of benefit smash that like button it really helps the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.